Jesus hardly ever compares uh, one's behavior with someone else's. Putting, as an example, a, a positive response to something, particularly when it comes to uh, the pagans. He did it, for example, uh, when the centurion's attitude of faith was so amazing to Jesus that he said, not even in Israel have I found faith like this. Over here, the places where he was stationed that saw him the most by the Sea of Tiberias, that was the Via Maris that was extending all the way through the northern part of Syria down to Egypt, where there was trade, a lot of caravans and people traveling. Um, these towns enjoyed Jesus' presence on a daily basis. So much so that when we go to Capernaum nowadays, before entering to the area where the ruins are, it's written the town of Jesus. And people are surprised. Wasn't Nazareth Jesus' town in his early days? But his mission base would be Capernaum. Just think about it. Having Jesus on daily basis, walking up and down and uh, uh, healing and uh, helping and saying uh, beautiful words of wisdom. But wait a minute. The tone changes here. Instead of patting them on their backs and saying how wonderful they are, he actually says, woe to you. But didn't you say the beautiful words earlier? How come this kind of a harsh tone? And if you read the Gospels, hardly ever you find such a strong word, we may say borderline of uh, condemnation. But these were his towns. But they missed the point, which is, I'm not here to entertain you. I'm not here just to provide physical um, nourishment and to heal a few people and make sure that you have something to talk about in your houses. I came here to help you to change your mentality, followed by change your actions. But since you missed it, then the Lord said, look, something really will happen to you that you don't want to see. And that's why he says Tyre and Sidon. These were pagan cities north from um, Capernaum. And Jesus says, those guys over there are much better than all of you punks who are here receiving my words. And at the end, we're very superficial and stupid. So what will happen to you? Jesus says, you will be raised to the ground. Do you know that for 2,000 years, those towns disappeared from the face of the earth. Only archaeology found them recently. But don't you see that Jesus Christ was there on a daily basis, and yet such a uh, result of his preaching took place there? It's not coincidental. The reason why he came is that people would say, look, we should sit in sackcloth in ashes, the ancient way of doing penance, and really rethink our ways seriously. We cannot play around with what Jesus Christ is telling us. We cannot just say, well, our father is Abraham, like we find out in the Gospel of John. Or it's nice, he's merciful, he doesn't really mind how we live. It's all good. No. Not like that. And can you imagine that he even um, in another gospel um, compares them to Sodom, which means the sort of a sea of iniquity and immorality. That's why we need to understand also what happened with the different events, historically speaking, were places that enjoyed Jesus' favor and they were so special at certain point are being raided, overrun, and destroyed. And everybody's saying, but they were good and 
faithful people here to your eye, but not to his eye. What was the reason for that? And the first reading could give us an answer to understand that the uh, people during the Babylonian captivity, they prayed. But do you notice the way they prayed? They didn't say, look, this is because of the demons we are here. Or King Nebuchadnezzar uh, exiled us. These are the circumstances. And actually, those who are guilty ones are the others. We are just sweet pies here. And we don't even know why we ended up in there. In all these years of priesthood, I hardly ever heard people, parents, communities who would say everything that has happened to me is because of my sins and iniquity. Usually it's, us it's blaming demons, right? That's easy one. Oh, he's busy in our neighborhood. Oh, no, no, it's us. If we don't see this point clearly, the grace of God will never intervene. Specifically, Baruch says all throughout this reading, I think three or four times, because we disregarded the voice of God, we bypassed it just enough that we don't pay attention and we don't take it seriously what the Lord is telling us, then it's on us. I can give you these examples. Have you ever seen a footage of a tsunami in Asia or in Japan or, for example, tornadoes in the Midwest? There is an announcement going on. And on a couple of occasions, I remember uh, hearing the story, there are people who disregarded the sound of siren. They thought they knew better. When they were asked to look for a shelter, they said, let me take a few pictures and then I'll figure it. If you see that tsunami coming in Japan, there is a siren and you better run for higher places. Otherwise, the wave will take you. So the voice of the Lord is there. The sound is there for warning. What we do about this voice, that is a very different story. But since the word of God was disregarded, was pushed aside, then they say, look, even the final uh, phrase, for we did not heed the voice of the Lord our God, meaning we didn't listen carefully, we didn't act on it, we didn't follow what this word was, as if to say God, through the prophets, was crying out to us. But we said, oh, come on, it's not going to be so bad. Are you so sure? And then the prophet says, in all the words of the prophets whom he sent us, but each one of us went off after the devices of his own wicked heart. Sure enough, because if we don't take seriously the word of God, then we have to follow our own wicked hearts, serve other gods and did evil in the sight of the Lord our God. Let's remember God is merciful and loving and really good. And he will do absolutely anything to spare us from the disasters. But he cannot make us do some things if we oppose him. He will find many ways sending the prophets, giving us inspirations, showing us the way out. <clears throat> but if the tornado is coming or the tsunami is arriving, and there is a signal, and you ignore it, disregard it. So don't blame the forecast meteorological office of the area or because the uh, speaker was not working well. We need to know whom to blame. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ is expecting uh, Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum to draw the lesson from Christ's words following on what he's saying, understanding that 
The fact that Jesus Christ ended up in here for all this time is for us to change our lives and really unleash the ocean of blessings and graces instead of going the opposite way. A call to faith and conversion for all of us to take wholeheartedly and seriously with all the open heart, the word that comes to us.